Welcome to Success in Medicine. I'm Dr. Samir Desai. With over 500 internal medicine residency programs to choose from, it can be difficult to decide which programs to apply to. There are many factors to consider when applying to IM programs. In this episode of the Success in Medicine podcast, I would like to present some factors that don't get enough attention but are important to your professional growth. Some of these factors may be easy to assess from review of program websites, but other factors will require you to talk with those who have personal knowledge of the program, either before you apply or later at the time of the residency interview. So let's get started. The first factor to consider is whether you will be fully engaged during the program's conferences and teaching rounds. I know what you're thinking. You're saying, if I'm there, I'll be fully engaged. Unfortunately, it's not that simple. Research shows that residents may be paged up to 84 times per day. Most of these interruptions are from nurses. A smaller number are from doctors. These disruptions can occur at any point in the day, including during educational activities. Disruptions that occur during educational activities are frustrating for residents. In addition, they interfere with learning. Having recognized this, some programs have put into place systems to reduce or eliminate pages or phone calls during rounds or conferences. However, not all programs do this. Few programs make their policies clear on their website, and that's why you will have to dig deep to find out this important information. Remember, it's great if the program has wonderful didactics and rounds, but that doesn't do you any good if you can't be fully engaged because of frequent disruptions. And now, let's discuss a second factor that deserves your attention as you're considering internal medicine residency programs. And that factor has to do with how well the residency program prepares you to land your first job. In particular, I want to focus on the employment contract. As you get closer to graduating from residency, you'll be looking for that dream job. But here's the sobering truth. It's very unlikely that you'll find that job right after residency. In fact, many physicians will change positions three to four times before they find the job that provides the satisfaction they were searching for. Why? Well, there are many reasons for this. But regardless of the reason, you want to have the freedom to move freely from one job to another if that first job or two don't work out. But there's something that limits a lot of young physicians from doing just that. It's the contract that you signed when you secured your job. Research shows that graduating residents looking for their first job are most focused on their starting salary. While that's understandable, there tends to be much less attention focused on other important contractual items like non-competes, restrictive covenants, and tail liability insurance. Not familiar with these terms? It's okay if you're not familiar with these terms now, but these are terms that you absolutely must know and understand as a senior resident. What happens if you don't? You may make a mistake on your employment contract agreeing to a clause that significantly limits your future career options. You may just find yourself unable to practice medicine at another location within your preferred geographic area because you signed a contract which restricted you from doing so. To avoid this from happening to you, you need to be educated on these business matters and your residency program should play a role in this process. So as you're assessing programs, don't forget to ask questions about what the program does to help their graduates in this very important area. The third and last factor I would like to present is the program's emphasis on wellness during residency. 
You'll see that a lot of websites make specific mention of this, but this is one of those areas that you want to really dig deep. You want to know what specifically the residency program has done to promote well-being among their trainees. What actions have they taken? Before we talk more about this, let me share with you some concerning numbers. In a 2006 study, 4% of internal medicine residents were burned out at the start of their intern year. That percentage climbed markedly by the end of the intern year when 55% were noted to meet criteria for burnout. Programs may not be able to change some of the factors that lead to burnout among residents. Long hours, the intensity of the patient care experience, lack of control over the work schedule, and not enough time to spend with loved ones are examples of factors that may not be fully modifiable. But programs do have control over other factors, and it's important that you consider this as you research internal medicine residency programs. Ask yourself the following questions. What kind of culture has a program developed with respect to wellness? Do they hold events to promote wellness? Do they have conferences dedicated to wellness topics? How do they recognize and reward the good things that residents do? Are they adhering to duty hour regulations? Are they looking for ways to minimize unnecessary phone calls and pages? Are they maximizing the educational experience at conferences and during rounds? And are they teaching residents important coping skills and strategies? Keep in mind that this is not an exhaustive list of questions for assessing wellness initiatives in residency programs, but it's meant to give you a start as you perform further research on your own. The bottom line is that you deserve to be at a program that takes resident wellness seriously. It's not enough to just talk about it. The program should be taking specific steps and actions to combat it. I wish you the best of luck in your efforts to find those programs that would be a good fit for your goals in internal medicine. As always, don't forget to visit our website, thesuccessfulmatch.com, for more information about how you can maximize your chances of success in the residency match. Until next time, I'm Dr. Samir Desai.